Greetings, everyone, and welcome to 2D inelastic collision examples. Here's kind of a classic example number one. A 1,500-kilogram car traveling north at 69 kilometers per hour collides at an intersection with a 3,000-kilogram truck traveling east at 55 kilometers per hour, as shown below. Here they go. So as you see there, they stick together during the collision. And what I want to know is, what's the velocity of the car-truck system after the collision? So you can see that, again, as we've done in the past, this is kind of a momentum-ish kind of uh, uh, situation because we're analyzing a collision, but obviously in more than one dimension. And it's a totally inelastic collision as they stick together afterwards, much like the carts we had with the Velcro ends. So first of all, let's uh, draw a little diagram here. So here is the truck. We're going to call that momentum P sub TI, T for truck, I for initial. Here's the initial momentum of the car traveling north. They hit one another and they go off with a final momentum at an angle theta. Well, a couple different ways we could do the problem. Um, the easiest way, though, is to deal with this as a basically as a vector problem. Uh, we know that. According to the law of conservation of momentum, the initial momentum must be equal to the final momentum of the system. And the initial momentum is simply the sum of the momenta of the truck and the car. Now, in the past, when they're in one dimension, that was fairly straightforward. But when they're in two dimensions, we have to be a little bit more mathematically crafty. But consider this from a diagramming standpoint. We are adding two vector quantities here initially. And certainly we know how to add vector quantities right, when we draw them. In order to add two things, we must draw the first vector. So there's the initial momentum of the truck. And then we must draw the second vector head to tail with the first. So this is the sum of the initial momentum of the truck and the initial momentum of the car. And since those two have to be equal to the final momentum, the final momentum becomes the resultant of our vector diagram. Okay, so check out that diagram again here. So we draw the initial momentum of the truck head to tail with the initial momentum of the car and then the resultant, the net effect, is the final momentum of uh, the combo. Well once we have that diagram the math actually is fairly straightforward. We've got an angle theta right in our diagram. We can relate the lengths of the three sides using the Pythagorean theorem. And notice here I've dropped the arrows because here we're only doing the magnitude of the momentums. Each one is, of course, a mass times a velocity. We've got to be a little careful here that when we're doing the final momentum, this is the final momentum of the system and therefore is the mass of the system. If you do all the algebra and solve for what we're looking for, which is VF, so square everything um, and then divide by uh, the square and then take a square root, this is what we get. You can hit pause here, of course, and check out the math. Plug all of our many, many numbers in. And notice here, it really doesn't matter that we have our velocities in kilometers per hour. As long as they're the same, we'll get an answer in kilometers per hour, because notice the kilograms all cancel. And we get an answer here of 43 kilometers per hour. Now, if we want the velocity of the car truck system, this is just the speed. We also need a direction, but we've got a nice little uh, angle theta here in our right angled vector diagram. And so we can just use an inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent. Plug in what each momentum is. Plug in the numbers. Again, we don't have to worry about the kilometers per hour. As long as they're the same, the units all cancel. And we get an angle of 32 degrees. Put it all together. Since there's north, south, east, west cardinal directions in the problem, we can use north, south, east, west in the answer. And we get a final velocity of 43 kilometers per hour at 32 degrees north of east. So again, kind of a crafty way of doing this problem and uh, looking at what this actually means vectorally rather than uh, breaking it up into two one-dimensional situations, which is another way of doing the problem but would take a heck of a lot longer. Here is number two. Number two is a classic physics problem here. It's something called a ballistic pendulum. And that is something that's it's hung up, so this mass is hung, and then this bullet is shot into the mass, and it makes the mass swing up to a height h. Okay, so the mass uh, down here, the block, stays at rest. It's shot with a bullet of mass little m, uh, an initial velocity we're going to call vbi. It embeds itself in the block and makes it rise up to an angle h, or to a height h, sorry. <laughs> 
through a certain angle. Now in this case, the bullet is 10 grams, the uh, pendulum is 6 kilograms, and it raises it 5 centimeters, so H here is 5 centimeters from where it started, and I want to work backwards and figure out what the initial velocity of the bullet is. Well, we can basically deal with this in, in two parts. First of all, we can analyze the collision between the bullet and the uh, block and the ballistic pendulum, if you will. And here, <coughs> we're going to shrink the uh, time interval to be just before the collision and then just after the collision. So in other words, before it swings at all. Okay, so we're going to look at just the collision part and isolate it by shrinking our initial and final times here. So just before to just after. Of course, the initial momentum and the final momentum has to be conserved. Initially, the only thing that has momentum is the bullet, which is the mass of the bullet times its initial velocity. And afterwards, the combo has uh, momentum. Be careful here, since it's a combo, it's the system mass times the final velocity of the combo. And this becomes a one-dimensional problem in this case because um, we're going to look at it again just after the collision, before it's had a chance to swing, and therefore before it's had a chance to move through two dimensions. So solving the final velocity of the ballistic pendulum and bullet combo is the ratio of the mass of the bullet to the total mass times the initial velocity of the bullet. Now, that doesn't get you anywhere here because we have too many unknowns. We don't know what this final velocity is, but we can analyze the swing of the ballistic pendulum separately using conservation of energy. Remember, we did many problems where, with, where we took an energy approach to a pendulum. Again, we have to restrict our range over which we're going to analyze the conservation of energy. Our initial is just after the collision, and our final is at maximum height. We're going to call that initial height zero here and make life easy. So, energy is conserved. Uh, a ballistic pendulum, you have to assume here, is a perfect pendulum, and so there's no energy dissipated. So the only changes in our internal energies are kinetic and gravitational because it's changing speeds and it's changing heights. Every change in is, of course, a final minus an initial. The final kinetic energy is zero because at its highest point, it's going to stop. The initial gravitational potential energy is zero because we're going to choose that bottom level to be zero. It's never going to go any lower than that, so might as well call that zero. And so as you might expect, the initial kinetic energy is all kinetic energy initially, and that equals the final kinetic, uh, gravitational potential energy. It's all EG at the end. Plug in our math models and be a little careful here about what we mean by mass. Right? Since this is after the collision, the whole thing is after the collision, it's both objects that are moving together. So, in fact, it actually cancels out, but just to be precise, it's not just a 1m or the other, it's both. The two m's cancel. And then if I solve for vi by multiplying by 2 and taking a square root, I get that the initial velocity is equal to the square root of 2gh. Now. Why is that important? Well, look at what we just did here. This initial velocity is the velocity just after the collision. Look over here. This final velocity is also just after the collision. So in other words, we can put those equal to one another. We can do a little substitution here. So by analyzing the collision separately from the motion, the energy part of it, we can kind of break it into two parts that we can do. And the collision is the momentum part and the uh, part here is the conservation of energy part as it swings. So set those two parts equal to one another and solve. And we have what's often called the ballistic pendulum equation, which tells us how to find the initial velocity of the bullet given the mass of the bullet, the mass of the ballistic pendulum, and the height it swings to. Those are all numbers in the problem. Of course, this could all be done, you know, different ways. If we know the velocity of the bullet, we could solve for h. I mean, we could really solve for anything in here. But given the numbers we have, we do have to be a little careful with units. We can't have grams and kilograms in the same problem. And if we're going to use g, which is, of course, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, we can't have centimeters in here either. So when we plug all our numbers in, we're going to change the mass of the bullet to 0 0.010 kilograms. We're going to change the height to 0 0.050 meters. And, and so again, we need the units to check out, so you got to be a little careful there. And we get an initial velocity of the bullet of about 600 meters per second, 6.0 times 10 to the second meters per second to two sig figs. So this is the ballistic pendulum. If we have time towards the uh, end of the unit, we might um, actually do a little 
practicum with a ballistic pendulum. Hopefully this helps you, and now tomorrow we will do a worksheet, which are all going to be kind of inelastic collision problems, some one-dimensional, some two-dimensional. Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation.